Good morning. Welcome to Gear City Church. It's awesome to see all your uh, smiling faces this morning. Uh, stand with us and, and uh, worship our God if you would.
you are more than enough. Sometimes we, we, we try to come to God and we can't because we don't feel like we're good enough. But can I tell you, he knows all about you. And he says you're still good enough. You know, the only thing that us as Christ followers, when we get to heaven, do you know the one thing that you can take with you? Not your friends, not your family, it's worship. Because when we enter heaven, we're all going to bow every knee. Can you imagine seeing the radiance of our Savior, the overcoming presence of Him, and we will all fall down and say, Jesus. I love what He says in John. He says, I have said these things to you that you may have peace. He goes on to tell the disciples, and He tells us today, in the world, you're going to have tribulations. But here's my favorite part. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And how do we repay him with our worship? That one name is above all names. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes. Open your hearts this morning.
good salt. He is the God of God of God, right? He is our soon coming King. I want somebody to get excited this morning. good enough. Father, may we all realize all we have to do is just come to you. Father, I pray that today as Eddie brings the word to us that you will just put a special, special anointing on him this morning. May the words of you that you have for him come out of his mouth. Father, I thank you so much for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You guys can be seated this morning. Thank you for being here, joining in worship, whether you are in person or online today. We love our Gear City family no matter where you are today. Um, and it's going to be a great Sunday. We have a full day, lots planned, and we are excited about it. <clears throat> we want to make sure that we connect with you, though. So if this is your first Sunday, maybe you're listening online for the first time, we want to make sure that we can stay connected past this moment with you today. So if you've never filled out a guest card, we're going to invite you to do that today. In person, you can get the red card that's right in front of you. Online, you can click the link, or anyone can text GC guest to 94,000. That will pull up the online guest card, and you can fill that out in person today. We will hand you a gift when you exit today if you've not already gotten one. If you're online, we will put that in the mail tomorrow as soon as we see your information pop up. So we just want to say thank you for coming, for joining with us. If you're looking for a next step, what do you do next? You've been coming for a little bit. What is my next step? You can fill that card out or fill that link out online. And we want to be able to help you do that. It might be attending our next Connect Track. It might be um, getting baptized or dedicating your children. Let us 
help you do that and walk through that journey. And if you have any prayer requests, we know there's a lot of sickness going around. We know there are people who are in and out of the hospital. Their school is starting for some people tomorrow. Any prayer requests you might have, please share those with us. You can fill out that card. You can email prayer at gearcitychurch.com. But we have a team that loves to pray over you. They want to pray with you, and they want to hear when things go well. So share those praise reports with us as well. But allow us to connect with you in those ways today. Thank you for doing that and sharing with us today. Um, if you're part of our Gear City family, we always give you that chance to give back to God. And so um, if you have your tithe ready, I just wanted to share this thought that I found this week that said, <clears throat> when you tithe, it's really teaching us to put God first in everything that we do. And so um, we try to teach that to our children. Um, you know, I'm sure that you do that. And it's a little bit easier when we say, you know, put God first in, in everything that you do. But then when it comes to the finance part, sometime that, sometimes that's hard. Um, but I want to encourage you in everything that you do, allow that to teach you to always put God first. Because when that happens, as you guys have probably experienced, then you're blessed. And God takes care of not only your needs, but the desires of your heart. So we say thank you for partnering with God um, and being a part of that and being a part of your local church. So if you would, um, I'm going to have you hold your tie. There's multiple ways you can give. So if you're giving in person, you can use the envelopes and you can hold those today. If you're going to give online um, or through text to give today, you just text the amount to 84321. Just hold your phone in your hand and I want to bless that today. Lord, we just give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord, for being here today, for bringing us together, God, and that our church family all around the world is gathered together, God, just to learn who you are, learn more about you, God, and just grow our relationship with you. And we thank you for the opportunity that we get to partner with you, God, in, in our giving, Lord, today, in our time and our talent and our treasure, Lord. And I just pray just pour the blessings on those, God, who trust you, God, with everything that they have, God, and they know that you're going to take care of them today. We thank you for the vision of our church and the fact that we were able to reach those in our community who are lost and hurting. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Jesus here because he is the most important. Look at somebody by and say, Jesus. That's who we're talking about today. Hey, we love the fact that you guys are here today. We say welcome to everybody that's on live stream and all of you that are in the room today. We're so grateful you came. And you know, I love the fact of what God continues to do at Gear City Church. And we know school is starting next week and, and parents are excited. That's your cue right there. Parents are excited. Yeah. And uh, we, we love what God is doing at Gear City Church, but every weekend, every single weekend, you have an opportunity to connect to God and to have a relationship with God. And, and through the ministry that we do on Sundays, there's a lot of people that make that happen. There's dream teams that make that happen. There's people parking cars, and there's people serving coffee, and there's, there's people that's teaching your kids about Jesus. Let me clarify to you. Be sure you don't call that child care because it's not babysitting. It is teaching Jesus. That's what we're all about here. There's people that volunteer their time so much, and today we are having a party for those people. Everybody say party. party. That's right. We're having a party for all the Dream Team members today at 4 p.m., and you definitely do not want to miss. We're going to feed you. We got tons of stuff we're going to give away. We're going to throw some, throw some bags at some cornhole, so we're going to have a lot of fun this afternoon, so don't miss that. Hey, I know a lot of you have wondered about some things that's been happening that we're closely connected to. 
Most everybody here by now knows that last weekend there was another terrible earthquake in the country of Haiti. We have traveled, our church has been part of traveling to Haiti for more than 10 years now since the first devastating earthquake that they had. Some of you will remember meeting Leslie and Vinette, his wife, uh, who traveled to our church uh, two years ago, their very first time ever to leave the country of Haiti. And they were here at our church and spoke to us. They are the people that are on the ground there doing missions work for us. We did talk to Leslie this past week, and of course we support them and, and sent more support this past week. Uh, but all the kids that, that we minister to, all the orphans that we help to feed, they're all safe. But unfortunately, in the southern part of the country, more than 2,000 people lost their life, and they're still finding people there. But thank you so much. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your heart for missions at Gear City Church. Because you continually give, whether you support missions uh, in other places, that's great. If you support here, you know as well we partner with Convoy of Hope. And they have been on the ground. Matter of fact, next week we're going to have an update from Convoy of Hope about what's happening in Haiti. So I just want to say thank you guys for making a difference in those lives there in that country. Well, I love the fact of, of what we're talking about in this series. And it's simply titled Just Jesus. We've been talking about what, what, what does it mean to be in relationship with Jesus and, and, and what, who was Jesus and what did Jesus do. And last week, Pastor Jeff uh, gave us a challenging message talking about where Jesus came from and he came from the other side of the railroad tracks if you will it was it was a city called Nazareth and he wasn't born into to this great lineage of royalty he wasn't born in, in, in the upper class area but God took his son Jesus sent him to earth that he could be a salvation for all of us that he could he could be the 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 ultimate sacrifice for our sin and with that, he showed where Jesus came from. He talked about the influences in Jesus' life. He talked about how other people look down on people from Nazareth. And, but you see, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your previous reputation is. It doesn't matter what you've been involved in. I want to tell you, when Jesus comes in your life, he can change your world. Amen? Amen? And I want you to know that no matter where you're from in this place, no matter... What, what your life has been, no matter who you used to be, when God comes in, when Jesus transforms you, He makes you a new creature. The Bible says this, it says the old man is gone and a new life begins. Amen? Now let me help you to understand something with that. Sometimes there's people who have a, who have a moment with God. There's some people who have a prayer to God there's, there's people that hear about Jesus, but their lifestyle doesn't change. Now let me tell you, that's not the Jesus I'm talking about. That's not the relationship I'm talking about. Because once you come in connection with just Jesus, and you forget everything else, I want you to know, your life will change. Which means your habits change. Which means your lifestyle changes. Which means you become a follower of Jesus, and you are at the place where you are... You are developing into a fully devoted follower of Him. And that means that things change. That means you stop doing things that you know are sin, and you start doing things that you need to do to develop your walk with God. Amen? That's what I'm talking about. Well, in this story of Jesus, and in this series, today I'm going to talk about the relationships of Jesus. Jesus had many relationships. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about who were they the people that he was in relationship with, the people that he loved on, the people that he impacted, who were they? I want, I want you to understand those people, the people that he contacted, the people that he, he spent time with, the people that he sat down with, they were tax collectors, they were fishermen, they were doctors. All of these people, they, they were accountants. They were people just like you and I as far as career goes. But there were people as well who didn't have a relationship with God. There were people that were prostitutes. There were people that, that were uh, taking their marriage context out of the marriage in a sexual relationship. And he was around adulterous people, people that had had multiple affairs. He loved on people who were criminals. He loved on people who, were, who were, uh, had lack of integrity. He loved on people who didn't have the greatest character. He loved on people who had bad reputations. And he loved on people for a reason. 
You see, Jesus had a lot of relationships. Who were they? And let me ask you this. Why did he choose them? Why did Jesus choose to be in relationship with these people? Why did he choose to be in relationship with those people? He chose to be in relationship with them because he wanted to to help them to understand that there is something greater than what they have obtained. There is a deeper walk with God than what they had previously experienced. You see, a lot of people at that time were trying to live according to the law. And I want to tell you something. You and I have no idea what it means to live according to the law. As a matter of fact, if you and I were required to live by the law, most of us would already be failing. But you see, when Jesus came, He came to be the sacrifice. He came that we would no longer have to live according to the law, but we live under grace. And you see, there is a vast difference. And I I wonder if we understand not only who he was with, but why did he choose to be with those people? And lastly, the relationships is what was the purpose of that? What was the purpose of the intentional relationships? And I believe we have to take a look at what he wanted us to know. is changed lives change lives. If you have been changed, if you have had a, an experience with God that changed you, I'm not talking about you know about Jesus. I'm not talking about you had a moment in prayer with Him. I'm not talking about you got the little feel goods and you're still doing all the stuff you're doing that you know is sin and you know it's habits and you know it's addictions. But I'm talking about people who are changed. I'm talking about a changed life. When you are changed, you will change other people. You'll make an impact on people. You see, these people that I'm talking about in reference today is the disciples. The disciples that followed Jesus. The disciples and the people that they impacted. These disciples were were people who were just common people. As a matter of fact, Acts chapter 4 says this. As one of the Sanhedrin court, one of the people who were talking about the disciples after Jesus had died, he made this statement in Acts chapter 4 verse 13. He said this. He said, they are, they're ordinary men with no learning. And what he was saying is they're just common people. They weren't born into royalty. They weren't in a certain lineage that made them stand out. They, they were ordinary men with no learning, which simply meant this. They didn't know about the law. They didn't know what it meant. To be a rabbi. They didn't understand the context of prophet. They were just people who needed a savior. Can I tell you today, you and I are people that need a savior. The Bible says you and I are all sinners, but we are in need of a savior. And there are so many people that is in that very same context. As a matter of fact, Jesus, in these relationships that he had, They were intentional relationships. They were relationships that he intentionally had with people. They weren't on accident. They were on purpose. They were hand-picked, but they weren't hand-picked according to what the law says, according to what what the religious people said. They were hand-picked. And when he hand-picked them, get this, he didn't choose anybody that was religious. He didn't choose anybody that knew the law. He didn't choose anybody that was living according to the law. He chose people to be in relationship with that knew they needed a Savior. Can I say to you today, until you know you need a Savior, you might not be in relationship with Jesus. Think about it for a moment. Until you recognize that you have sinned, until you recognize that you're living in sin, then you might not be in a relationship with Jesus. Because you see, you can't just snuggle up to Him and be your little snuggle buddy and think everything's okay. Because once you realize you need a Savior, something changes about you. You walk away from the things that drag you down and you become who Jesus wants you to be. I want to give you a story and talk about some of the things that Jesus done. So in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 10, here's a story of Jesus. He's with, he is with one of his disciples. And Matthew, 
has just called this group of people together to have dinner at his house. And listen to what happens. Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to come to his home as dinner guests along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. Now, now here's Matthew who Jesus chose. Here's Matthew who Jesus began a relationship with. If you read previously in, in the earlier part of Matthew chapter 9, you'll see where Jesus came to Matthew, called him to be a follower, and said, hey, leave everything behind and come after me and follow. And Matthew accepted that challenge. And he began to teach Matthew the understanding and, and, and what it meant to have relationship with people. And he, in the midst of that, as he grew in his, his walk with God, as he, he grew in knowing and understanding who Jesus was, Matthew invited a bunch of tax collectors and other disreputable sinners to his house. Now as he sat with them, as he invited them, he also invited Jesus and his disciples. Now let me ask you, why do you think that Matthew would invite people who are disreputable sinners, people that he knew was not following Jesus, people that he knew uh, was not living according to, to the grace or, or, or even according to the law of religion? Why would he invite those people to sit down with these people? Why would he invite those people to sit down with these people? You see, it was intention. It was intentional that, that he realized that these people right here, those people, that these people can make an impact on those people. These people are the ones who have committed to serving God. These are the disciples who have said, yes, I will leave everything. Yes, I'll walk away from sin. Yes, I'll walk away from relationships that are bad. Yes, I will stop my habits. Yes, I will change my lifestyle. And he wanted to intentionally put these people in the seats with those people. Look at it like this. So Jesus is sitting at a table. He's sitting at a table. I want you to just think about it. As Jesus sits at a table with people, what that could have looked like when he's sitting there. In the moment as Jesus sits at the table, let me ask you, who are you intentionally sitting at the table with? Who are you intentionally having relationship with, building a relationship, a friendship? Who are you intentionally trying to impact with the message of hope? Who are you intentionally trying to love on? Because you see, there are people in our world, there are people in your circle of influence, there are people in your workplace that you're going to see tomorrow morning, there are people that are in the marketplace that we see all week long. There are people in our own family. Some of us have people in our own families, immediate family. Brothers, sisters, moms, dads, children or grandchildren. Brothers and sisters, whoever it is that does not know Jesus. And let me ask you this question. Who are you intentionally sitting at a table with? You see, Jesus was invited by Matthew because Matthew understood Matthew understood the impact of Jesus. He understood that these people can impact those people. We all have and know those people. I want you to think with me for just a moment. Who are those people? Those people. Some of those people are our very best friends. I have some very good friends of mine. Very good friends that, that I mean, even to the level that I spend time with them, very good friends that I, I play golf with, like spend three or four hours at a time with them, that are those people. They don't know Jesus. They don't have a relationship with God. They are those people. Some of you, I want you to think about for just a moment, who are those people? in your life those people that you go to family Thanksgiving with and you go through the same Thanksgiving dinner you go through the same 4th of July celebration and they are actually those people and in the midst of all that maybe that's your family maybe it's your friends some of you you go to work and you sit in a, a cubicle you you work on a, a factory line you you serve people 
in your job, whatever it is that you do, you communicate with clients or customers. And they are those people. And those people are hurting. Those people are broken. Those people... Lives are full of sin and addiction and adultery and those people's lives have had criminal activity. What are you intentionally doing when you sit down at the table with them? Who are you intentionally inviting to your table? In reference, let's just take that, that say that that table is, maybe it is actually a table where you invite them to your home for dinner. Maybe it is actually a table where you sit at Starbucks and you drink a cup of coffee. Maybe it is a table where you actually are teeing up a ball to play golf. Maybe it actually is a, a table where you went to the rodeo with them on Friday night. Maybe it actually is a table where you have stood at the fence between your two lawns and you've talked about things that are going on in the world and you've talked about politics and you've talked about racial tension. You've talked about whatever it is and it is the table. I want to ask you, who are you intentionally bringing to the table? And why are they sitting there? And the last question about this, that is this. Are you making an impact? What are you doing to actually make an impact in their life? When you sit at the table with them, are you actually doing something to make a, a life impact on them? That they see Jesus in you. That they know that Jesus lives inside of you. That they understand and know that when you play football with them or you sit in a classroom with them or when you have coffee with them or when you work beside them or when, oh, your world crashes in, that your faith that you talk about is actually activated. You see, you can talk about it all you want, but you got to be about it. That means the choices you make on Friday night. That means the choices you make on Saturday night or Monday morning or Thursday afternoon when you've had a horrible day. The choices you make then have got to be intentional to help people to recognize that what lives inside of you, what you talk about and what you say actually is activated and it's your faith. These relationships of Jesus, they were intentional. He intentionally brought people to the table. And he gathered them around. But let me help you to understand the most important part of this is right here. Jesus sat with sinners for dinner, but he didn't sin with them. Know the difference. I want you to get this. Write it down. Get your notepad out on your phone. Take a picture of the screen. Get it. Jesus sat with sinners for dinner, but he didn't sin with them. Know the difference. There is a vast difference when you intentionally have relationship with people. You, when you intentionally invite people that you know are far from God, or they invite you, don't just go and get in the crowd and do what they do. He's called you to come out from among the world and be separate. He called you to leave the old life behind and let a new life begin. But the problem is sometimes we don't change. We have a moment with Jesus. We say a little prayer to Jesus. We get a little feel good of going to church. And then we think when we're in relationship with people, we just think we're going to have an impact. Let me help you understand. You will not impact people to experience Jesus until your life is changed. But when your life does change, let me tell you something. Jesus just oozes out of you. Let me help you to understand something. When your life has been changed, it's all about Jesus. When your life has been changed, you can't help but talk about everything that's going on good in your life and saying, you know what, I am so blessed. You can't help but say it when somebody's like, man, I'm going through a tough time, that you just step up and say, you know what, let me pray for you because I believe Jesus will help you. You see, when he's inside of you, you don't do and sit at a table and sin like they sin. you got to know the difference. This impact that I'm talking about, this inviting people to the table, whether it's an actual table or standing at the fence between two lawns, or whether it's somebody that you're, you're in school with sitting in a desk across from, or wherever it is, you've got to know the difference. You see, the New Testament church was built on relationships, not on laws. I want you to think about that for a moment. 
When Jesus came, the New Testament church that he launched wasn't built around a bunch of laws. It was built on relationships. And your relationships is what makes an impact on people, not your laws. And the problem is, here's what happens with some people who are really religious. And let me help you to understand something. I want you to listen closely to what I'm saying on live stream and in this room. There are some people who are really religious and self-righteous, and all they do is spout off the laws and the sins of every other person. But when you're in intentional in a relationship with people that creates an impact, get this, I can speak to you and I can speak to you about the things in your life that you need to change because I love you. There is a difference. There are people who will just spout off religion to people and tell them how bad they are and everything is going on in their life. But when I'm in relationship with you, I have the ability to be able to speak to you about the things that are going to send you to hell, the things that are going to pull you down, the people you need to separate from. Because I can say to you, hey, listen, man, I see you going down a bad path, and I love you. And because I love you, let me help you here. Right? See, there's a vast difference. Sometimes we, 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 we cross it up, we get it all mixed up, we're like, well, they're just religious. No, I'm going to tell you, if I love you, I'm going to tell you the thing that's going to destroy your life. Yeah. Not in a religious, self-righteous way, because all, everybody say all, all, all of us have sinned, right? But as your leader, as your pastor, I'm going to speak that to you. But also the people that are surrounding you that you can have an impact on. I don't have to tell people all the junk and funk that's wrong in their life. What I got to do is love them. And as I love them, in the moment in time that God opens the door and they say, well, you do you really think it's wrong to do X, Y, Z? We do something. We go back to the Word and we get the Word of God and we say, this is what the Bible says. Right? Right. I don't, I don't have to give them my opinion. It's not my opinion. It's what the Bible says. And let me tell you something. If the Bible says it's sin, it's sin no matter what you think. And the Bible is very plain about what is sin. And you see, I, I wonder if we've, we've got to this place that we missed this very bold statement that the Apostle Paul is making in Romans chapter 12. I love this in verse, verse 2. It's an amazing scripture. It says this, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Let Him transform you By changing your mind, by changing your words, by changing the things that you're thinking is going on. Here's what's going on. Jesus intentionally had relationship with people. He intentionally called people from out among sin. And the reason people followed him was because he loved them. The way you're going to make an impact in your world is by loving people. Not being self-righteous. Not saying, well, I was in Sunday school for for 30 years. I remember back when. That doesn't change anybody's life. Just love them and say, I know that I love you because Jesus has shown his love to me. And I want to love you through your stuff. And I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to help you. And when you text me or call me or when you come to my desk, I want to love on you. See, that's what it's about. The scripture goes on to say this. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. But first of all, it begins at the very first part. You can't miss the first part. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. But let God transform you by the way you think. And then, everybody say then. Then Then you will learn to know God's will for your life, which is pleasing and good and perfect. He's got a will for you. So let me just ask you this question. Who is your tribe? Who is your tribe? Who... Who are the people? Why did you choose that tribe? Let me ask you this. Do you have a tribe that's kind of secret? That you just don't want a lot of people to know about? That's like you know it's not really right. And and you know that you really need to walk away from that lifestyle or that situation. You need to walk away from the bad influences. You need to walk away from the negative people. Who is your tribe? When you think about your tribe, who are the people that are impacting your life? Who who is it that's your tribe? 
Why did you choose those people? And what is the purpose of that tribe? You see, a tribe that I'm talking about is like people that you surround yourself with. They are the influencers in your life. My tribe is the influencers in my life. There are people that make an impact on me that I spend time with and I want to spend time with. They're the, they're the people that I'm talking about that mentor me. They sharpen me. They're people that I intentionally want to hang out with, that I go to dinner with, because they sharpen me and they help me. And it's a tribe of people. That could be in the context of a group in the local church. It could be the context of, of hanging out with a, a golf group. It could be the context of going to Sybil's with three or four couples that, that you just you enjoy being around. You say, I'm going to go and hang out with those people that I'm talking about, like, like people who can sharpen my marriage when me and my wife are together. People that can help me to grow in that. There are people that, that I intentionally have coffee with every week. Nothing changes that just unless I'm out of town and I'm going to sit down with them. You know why? Because they sharpen me. They help me. They understand me. Who is your tribe? But second of all, who is the tribe you're trying to reach? Who are the people you, you should sur surround yourself with? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 says this. So now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. Get this, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. So it's not only the tribe that I want to be around, but who is the tribe, the people, those people that I know, these people that are my mentors, these people that I do dinner with, these people that sharpen me as iron sharpens iron, they encourage me, they're my mentors, whatever it is. I know that because I'm with them, then I can have this tribe over here of those people. And the Apostle Paul is talking here and he says this, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have, have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and to urge each other onward. To encourage each other to go higher. To encourage each other to take a next step. Yeah. I, I want to I be around those people that is intentional. That I'm having an impact on. And the tribe that I got over here, that's my life group or my connect group. And they're, they're mentors to me and they're helping me. They're sharpening me. They're the people that, that are positive to me. I want to take what I'm learning there and go over here and have this tribe of those people that's at my work, my next door neighbor. The people maybe who are just hurting and broken and suffering and sin-filled lives that they just need me to show them the love of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Those groups of people provide love for one another. Those groups of people provide love for one another. The groups that I'm talking about, they, they are those people. The people that's going to love you with a godly love. Those people over here, I'm going to love them the way Jesus loved me. I'm going to love them the way, that, the way that my group, the way that my tribe loves me. They accept me for what I've done wrong. They love on me. They pray with me. And now I want to take what I've learned there and come over here to this, this group, this other tribe that I'm going to impact the same way. You see, and that group provides love. Secondly, those groups give us opportunities to serve others. Those groups give us opportunities to serve others. I love the friends that I hang out with and do dinner with and play golf with. And, and I love those that I get to have coffee with on a weekly basis. But they are sharpening me and I continue to do that. But I don't want to miss the opportunity over here. With my tribe of people that I play golf with that have no relationship with God. That when I play golf with them, their language is not always the best. They don't talk about Jesus like I do. They've not experienced the love of Jesus like I have. But I'm going to love on them that they may see the love of Jesus. And that creates an opportunity to serve other people. And thirdly, those groups, these groups is where spiritual formation is strengthened. It's in those moments, it's in these tribes where discipleship and spiritual growth happen. You're saying, Eddie, so, so you're telling me 
Listen to what I'm telling you. Get, get this. Don't miss this right here. I want you to pay close attention to what I'm saying to you. The group that's my tribe that I run with, that are my friends that are followers of Jesus, they're the people I hang with, the people I have coffee with, they mentor me, iron sharpens iron. Those are great. I need those. Okay? Understand that. Okay? That's not where spiritual formation is always happening in the people who don't know Jesus. That's where I'm receiving spiritual growth and development. But then I take what I've learned and I go over here and I have another tribe, another group of people where Jesus sat with Matthew and the disreputable sinners that I'm talking about. And what I've learned over in that tribe, I bring it over to this tribe. What I learned when they sharpen me as iron sharpens iron, as mentors lead me, as I talk about ministry and spiritual formation, I now bring that spiritual formation over here. And I don't, I don't point out sins. I don't say, hey, you're wrong, you're going to hell. But I love them. And as I love them, I build relationship with them just like Jesus did. Remember, we started talking about the relationships of Jesus. And this is what he done. Get this. He provided love for them, okay, first and foremost. Second of all, it was opportunities to serve. And thirdly, that's where spiritual formation happened. When Jesus spent three years with 12 people that he chose, they weren't like clean living people, right? They were a mess, but he loved them. He gave them opportunity to serve. And spiritual formation and discipleship began to happen. It's in that context of that tribe and that group. Can I tell you today, you can lead a group with your tribes. You can lead a group with your tribe. What does it look like for you to lead a tribe? What does it look like for you to be part of a tribe and, and to lead a group when you... When you Lead this group that's a tribe. What does that actually look like? Remember what I said. When you're part of this group over here, and you're doing dinner, and you're hanging out, and maybe it's a Gear City group, and that's powerful. It's so awesome that you are part of that. I love that. That's, we're all about groups and having tribes. But the stuff I learn here, I take over to here. And maybe this is where I, I lead a connect group. Like where I say, hey, I've got some guys I already play golf with. Why don't, why don't I just make that intentional? I got some, I got some girls I already, already do coffee with. We already do lunch once a month. Why don't we just make that intentional like Jesus did? Take it beyond just the lunch or dinner or coffee. And over here on this side, be sure that you recognize there's opportunity to love them in the midst of their sin. It's opportunity to be able to ask them, hey guys, I, I just want you to know today before we go, is there anything I can pray with you about? I, I, you know, I mean, you might not even believe in prayer, and that's okay. I just want you to know that if you need me to pray for you, I'm here to pray for you. See, there's a vast difference in that and being religious and self-righteous, pointing out people's failures and faults and sins. To just say, hey, you know what? I've never thought about it this way, but I'm already... I'm already having a tribe here because I do golf. I play cards with them. Maybe you smoke cigars with them. Maybe there's things that you do with them. And you're like, man, I never really recognized I could take those people and like help them to see who Jesus is. You can lead a tribe. You can lead a group. And God will give you opportunities to serve others. And all of a sudden, without you even recognize it, when you ask somebody, can you pray for them? And you just like stop, and there's like two or three people that's in this little tribe or group, or maybe you got four or five people at work. And you say, hey man, let, let, let me pray for you right now. I know you're going through a tough time. Lord, thank you for this person. Lord, I just want to thank you for Sam. I, I know he's struggling with something right now, God. He's, he's going through some work issues and some kid issues. But Lord, I'm asking you to help him, and I'm here to help him. Boom, 30 seconds. Don't pray long in 30 seconds. Right? When you with this people over here, don't pray. Just like say a simple prayer and say, Lord, I'm here to help them. Amen. And you know what begins to happen? Spiritual formation begins to happen. Discipleship begins to happen. And then next time they're like, oh man, I, I, I he can pray for me. Let me just ask him again if he would pray for me. You see, something begins to grow when you
you center your focus on relationship. Gear City Groups, something we do here. And I want to tell you, anybody can lead a connect group because it's just connecting people to people. And once you connect people to people, you connect them to Jesus because it's just Jesus and nothing but Jesus. And I want to tell you today, as I get ready to pray for you, I'm going to ask you to just stand with me. And as I get ready to pray for you today, I, I want you to just quiet your heart, quiet your spirit, because we're talking about Jesus. There is no other impact other than Jesus. It's not how good you are. It's not what church you go to. It's not the way that you think religion should be. There is one name, and it is only the name of Jesus. And it is by His name that deliverance comes. It's by His name that salvation happens. It's by His name that the hurting and the broken are healed. It is by the name of Jesus. And I'm going to pray for you today, and as I do, I want you to think about, God, how can I make an impact in my tribes? Father, I thank you today for the power of your word. Lord, I thank you today because I know that you have called us. Lord, you have commissioned us to make an impact in this world. And I pray that you'll help me to recognize the tribe, the people, the groups of people, Lord, that I can make that impact on. Where deliverance is found and forgiveness is found, healing is found, and salvation is experienced. Lord, we know it's by no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. We give it to you today. Come on, worship him today and give him the salvation. Jesus. It is the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. If you're online, a live stream, or if you're in this room, I want you to know that it will change your world. And we want to give you what's called a start to follow packet. Inside here is a new believer's Bible, which is essential to your walk with God. And this little book right here will help you to know the next steps that you need to take. If you're on live stream today, if you'll go in and drop down in the comments section, and you'll just, if you'll just write in there, start to follow then we will contact you and be sure you get this packet in the mail. If you're in this room and you made that decision today, right at the back of the auditorium is a big white banner with a red arrow on it. And I want you to know you can stop in there and somebody will high five you and congratulate you and hand this to you. Today, that is the greatest decision anybody can make. And there are people that made that decision. Would you celebrate with me today for those people? Congratulations to you. 
Amen. You may be seated this morning. We are so thankful for you and your heart to serve God. We love the fact of what God has done in your life and continues to do in your life. And you know what? Here at Gear City Church, we've been talking about for a few weeks our all-in initiatives. You've seen this banner out in the lobby. And in your seat, there are cards that look like this. I'm going to ask you to grab this card, this piece of paper. Because if you are part of Gear City Church, this is what we do. We pray for God to give us goals. We pray for God to, to reveal to us initiatives to impact the kingdom of God. And on here, you see listed how we can develop our online campus even greater. It's awesome now. we got people there. But man, there are so many more areas that we want to be able to reach to and platforms we want to be able to extend the gospel. As a matter of fact, something just happened this past week that I hadn't even shared with anyone yet. But God has opened a door of opportunity for us to be on seven Christian television stations. This is part of that online campus I'm talking about. This is part of reaching to people where they need Jesus. See, what I'm talking about is through this all-in initiative that you see listed here that, that there are so many missions projects, just like in Haiti. See, we already forwarded money to Haiti this week since the earthquake last week. That's because of the extravagant generosity of the people of Gear City Church. And I want to tell you how much I appreciate and thank you for what you do. But this all-in initiative, we prayed and we've asked you. We've talked about it with our legacy team. We talked about it for two weeks. And today is the day we've asked you to make a commitment. It's the day we ask that we're going to receive that first offering, that commitment offering. Maybe it's a one-time gift for you, but then a monthly commitment for the, from now to the end of the year. And we believe that God's going to help us to raise the $85,000 between now and December 31st. That all of these initiatives will be in place. You see, we have Love the 573 initiatives right now that we want to be able to do. That's just missions in our community. We're right here in our community. We're making an impact with people. And when we give toward that, it can make that impact. We've talked to you about the campus we want to launch at Leaking Prison, God Behind Bars. That's what this is all about. And I want to say thank you for your commitment to it. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to just flip the card over. And you'll see on your card, Karen and I have already filled ours out. And you'll see where you can be a part of that. I'm going to give you a minute to just think and just quietly pray to yourself that maybe you go ahead and fill this out today. And if you didn't come prepared to give today, that you'll go ahead and fill the card out. And I'm going to give you that time to do that. Then the ushers are going to come in just a moment. They're going to pass the buckets. And you drop your card and your giving for today in that bucket if you'd like. But I want to give you a minute to just think about this and maybe talk with that person that's with you who's your spouse. So take that moment to do that. Hey Gear City, thanks for joining us today. A couple announcements before you head out. Today at 4 p.m. is our Dream Team Party. So if you are a part of our Dream Team Party in any department, we want you to come join us. Also, sign-ups for connect groups, life groups, and interest groups. Start. And we also want you to be a part of our Dream Team. So if you are not a part of a Dream Team or serving already, after second service at 12 p.m., we have lunch provided for you and childcare. So stop by and get more information on that. Also, Friday, August 27th from 6 to 9 is Kids Night Out. You can come drop your kids off for a fun night of pizza and game. We hope to see you there. You're dismissed.